Sutra. When this devin thought combines with thinking, it becomes locations and places. When it combi combines with seeing, it becomes inspection and testimonies. When it becomes with hearing, it becomes huge crashing ropes, ice and frost, dirt and, fro and fog. When it combines with smelling, it becomes a great fiery car, a fiery boat, and a fiery gel. When it be combines with tasting, it becomes a loud calling, wailing, and regretful crying. When it combines with touch, it becomes the sensations of large and small, when where 10,000 births and 10,000 deaths are endured every day, and all of lying with one's face to the ground. Commentary. When this devil thought combines with thinking, it, com it becomes locations and places. Devil thought means that the things one thinks about are improper and one indulges in fantasies. That is, one's thoughts dwell on strange and weird things. When the devil thought receives a retribution directed at itself, it turns into evil places of inquisition and interrogation. When it combines with seeing, it becomes inspection and testimonies. Inspection refers to the offense spotting mirror in the house. When you arrive, you have to go before the mirror and watch all the offenses you created in your life appear there, just as if they were frames of a movie. They are all in vivid detail and there's no way you can back out of them. You can't avoid owning holding up to them. If you refuse to admit them, you have to endure testimonies in which people prove what you did. When it combines with hearing, it becomes a huge crashing rocks. They close in on the four sides surrounding you and crush you between them and is cold with ice and frost and there is dirt and fog. This hell is polluted. A yellow haze defies the atmosphere so that you can't see anything and you get dizzy and disoriented. When it be combines with smelling, it becomes a great fiery car. This combine, uh, this does not refer to trends that take us on vacations here in the world, but rather to a red hot to a car, red hot with fire that one is forced to sit in. A fiery boat means that the entire boat is ablaze and you must climb abroad. A fiery jail is a prison for a fire that you must enter. When it combines with tasting, it becomes a loud calling, wailing and regretful crying. The noise in this hell is tremendous. One experiences great regret in this hell and one mourns and weeps. When it combines with touch, it becomes a sensation of large and small, big hells and little hells, where 10,000 births and 10,000 deaths are endured every day. In the course of one single day, one dies a myriad times and is born a myriad times, and it becomes lying with one's face to the ground. Whether lying down, crawling, or standing up, one undergoes punishment. In general, this is not a pleasant place to be. It's not likely spot to want to go. For the pain and suffering is tremendous. Sutra Ananda they are called, These are called the ten causes and six retributions of the health which are all created by the confusion and falseness of living beings. Commentary Ananda these are called the ten causes and six retributions of the hells. Many different hells have just been named and all come from the ten habitual causes, which are these lust, greed, arrogance, hatred, deception, lying, animosity, views, injustice, litigation. They result in the six intermingling retributions that involve the eyes ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind as they react to forms, sounds, smells, tastes, objects of touch, and dramas. These, are, these hells are all created by the confusion and falseness of living beings. They come from giving rise to falseness within the one truth. Once ignorance arises, 
various karmic manifestations result from it. From the karma, various offenses are created, but if one returns the hearing to hear the self-nature and cultivates this path to enlightenment, then all this karma becomes empty, it disappears. Sutra, if living beings create this evil karma simultaneously, they enter the Avashi hell and endure limitless suffering passing through limitless compass. Commentary, if living beings create this evil karma simultaneously, they enter the Avashi, Avashi hell if they indulge in behavior that includes all ten causes and all six intermingling retributions. They go to the Avishi hell. It is a relentless hell, but it is the most severe one. So here it is named specifically. Basically, all the relentless hells can be called Avashi, but here the most severe one is specifically given that name. In that hell, they endure limitless suffering, passing through limitless compass. Sutra. If each of the six sense organs cures them, and if what is done includes each state and each sense organ, then the person will enter the eight relentless house. Commentary If each of the six sense organs cures them, if the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind each create these offenses, the ten habitual causes, but not all at the same time, as in the previous passage, and if what is done includes each state and each sense organ, then the person will enter the eight relentless house. What's done means that the sense organs do in reaction to the states of the sense objects, the kind of karma they create. Each state refers to the sense objects and each sense organ, so the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind individually. What is done is the offenses which are created from the habitual causes. Here, all the sense organs create all the habitual causes, but they do not do it simultaneously. A person who follows his six sense organs and six sense objects to create such offenses will undergo the retribution of the eight relentless hells. There are eight hot and eight cold hells, and this refers to the eight cold hells. Sutra, if the three karmas of body, mouth, and mind commit acts of killing, stealing, and lust, the person will enter the 18 hells. Commentary, if the three karmas of body, mouth, and mind commit acts of killing, stealing, and lust, there are three evils of the body. Killing, stealing, lust, there are four evils of the mouth, bull speech, false speech, harsh speech, backbiting. There are three evils of the mind, greed, hatred, stupidity. If the karmas of the body, mouth, and mind are not pure, then one creates these ten evils. The person will enter the eighteen hells. There are terrible punishments in these eighteen consecutive hells. Sutra, if the three karmas are not all involved, and there is perhaps just one act of killing, and or of stealing, then the person must enter the 36th house. Commentary In the situation described above, the karma created was heavy. Now the three commas are not all involved in making offenses. If the three commas are not all involved, and there is perhaps just one act of killing and or of stealing, maybe the person commits one murder or one theft, or he commits murder and a theft, or he commits a murder and an act of lust or a theft. In short, he doesn't do them all, but some partial combination of them. The offense karma of a person that in that situation is a bit lighter, then the person must enter the 36th house. Although he has to undergo more house, the offenses are lighter and the suffering in this house are not, is not as severe. Sutra, if the sense organ of sight alone commits just one comic offense, then the person must enter the 108 house. Commentary, if the sense organ of sight is a source of all offenses, it is said, if the eyes didn't see it, the mouth would not be gluttonous for it. 
If the ears didn't hear it, the mind would not make transgressions concerning it. If you didn't say something good to it, your mouth would not commit the offense of gluttony. If the ears did not hear lovely sounds, the mind would not give rise to thought of desire. Seeing them in the beginning of evil and the source of offenses, therefore the text says, if the sense organ of sight alone commits just one comic offense, perhaps it commits only one of the three commas of the body, killing or stealing or lust, then the person must answer the 108 hells. Sutra, because of these living beings who do certain things create a certain karma and so in the world they enter collective hells, which arise from false thinking and which originally are not there at all. Commentary, because of this, because of the various circumstances described above, living beings who do certain things create certain karma, they do individual things, they create their own special offenses and then they have to undergo a retribution, and so in the world they enter collective hells. All the people who create a particular kind of karma enter that collective hell. Each category of offense has its retribution, and all who create that offense collectively undergo the retribution in the hells, which arise from false thinking and which originally are not there at all. These hells arise from offenses. Offenses are created because of ignorance. They arise from false thinking. Originally, though they don't exist at all, originally there is purity and no definement. There isn't anything at all. But just because you make one false move, you blow the whole jazz game. As it is said, if one is off by a hair in the beginning, one will miss it by a thousand miles. Sutra and then Ananda, after the living beings who have slandered and destroyed rules and department, violated the Bodhisattva precepts, slandered the Buddha's Nirvana, and created various other kinds of karma, passed through many compas of being burned in the inferno. They finally finish paying for their offenses and are reborn as ghosts. Commentary since the explanation of the ten habitual causes and the six intermingling retributions is not yet finished, Shakyamuni Buddha says. And then, Ananda, let me tell you some more about this principle. After the living beings who have created karmic offenses, who have slandered and destroyed rules and deportment, they said things like, those precepts and rules in your Buddhism are not necessary. People should be free to do as they please, especially in America. This is a democratic country and everyone is free and independent, so there shouldn't be prohibitions in Buddhism either. They denounce the, the idea of the Buddha's precepts. They say that one can be left home person, a member of the Sangha, whether one has taken precepts or not. They claim that the precepts and rules are unnecessary and that there is no need to abide by the 3,000 modes of department and the 80,000 subtle aspects of conduct. They violated the Bodhisattva precepts. They don't uphold the 10 major and 48 minor Bodhisattva precepts. They violate them. They slandered the Buddha's Nirvana. They say that the principle of Nirvana is also incorrect. These kinds of people are steeped in offenses. They have created various other kinds of karma as well, a lot of bad karma. After creating offenses such as these, they pass through many compas a tremendously long time of being burned in the inferno before they finally finish paying for their offenses. Eventually, their offenses are gone and they no longer have to dwell in their house undergoing bitter retributions. When their offenses are paid back, they are reborn as ghosts. True enough, they finished being punished for their offenses, but then they get reborn as ghosts. People who call themselves disciples of the Buddha and yet don't believe in ghosts should pay attention to the mention of ghosts in the Shura Gama Sutra. There are many kinds of ghosts, not just one kind. 
in fight, I tell you something. The Sura Gama Mantra, for the most part, consists of the names of ghosts. La Shu Po Ye, Chu La Po Ye, are names of ghosts. The reason we recite the mantra is to call out the names of the ghost kings. When we recite names of the big ghosts, all the lesser ones don't dare make trouble either. Mantras are the names of ghosts and spirits. The beings discussed here are reborn as ghosts. What kind of ghosts? Ten kinds of ghosts are now discussed in connection with the karma created from the ten habitual causes. But in fact, there are many kinds of ghosts, not just ten. These are just representative. Sutra, if greed for material objects was the original cause that made the, the person commit offenses, then after he has finished paying for his crimes, he takes shape when he encounters material objects and he is called a strange ghost. Commentary, if greed for material objects was the original cause on his causal ground that made the person commit offenses, then after he has finished paying for his crimes, he takes shape when he encounters material objects. What kind of objects was he greedy for? The greatest desire is the desire for sex. If he sought such things when he was on the causal ground, if he committed crimes while doing so, then he has to fall into the hell. After his term in hell is finished, he takes shape when he encounters material objects. What kind of objects? Any kind, whatever kind it is. He can attach himself to it and take his form from it. He's called a strange ghost. Sutra, if it was greed for lust that made the person commit offenses, then after he has finished paying for his crimes, he takes shape when he encounters the wind and he is called the drought ghost. Commentary, if it was greed for lust that made the person commit offenses, then after he has finished paying for his crimes, he takes shape when he encounters the wind in China, someone who is lustful and sad is said to be greedy for the wind and the current. People who are like this end up as the drought ghost. What are the drought ghosts like? Wherever they go, it doesn't rain. And this is due to the tricks of desert and of drought ghosts. If you encounter a place where the drain does not fall, where the sprouts in the fields dry up and die, do you know how now that such a place is inhabited by a drought ghost? This is true. By listening to the Suragama Sutra, you can unravel all the mysteries of the world. All the questions of physical science are clarified in this sutra. If you hadn't heard this sutra, you wouldn't understand the reason behind droughts and deserts. Basically, these are due to the tricks of the drought ghost. This kind of person was greedy for the wind and the current. And so now, when his ghost encounters the wind, it takes its shape and is called a drought ghost. He causes drought wherever he goes. Pretty talent, huh?